this morning you get me double time on the life of the church and the reflection. I don't say that. <laughs> However, this morning I am going to be speaking to you all about spiritual gifts. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Where? Do I let my little light shine? Do I even know what and where my little light is? And who is benefiting from it? We do not choose which gifts we will receive. God dispose, <laughs> bestows them upon us through the work of the Holy Spirit. Through many sections of scripture, we learn that all Christians have been given at least one spiritual gift. The purpose of spiritual gifts is twofold, to unify Christians in their faith and to produce growth within the church, both numerical and spiritual. These gifts are to be used out of love for one another and in service to one another. And at Lexington Presbyterian mission statement proclaims, our task is to understand, embrace, rejoice, and share that intention. <laughs> There have been many times in my life when I have found myself in a situation and asked God how I got there. And now, what do I do? I believe that God put me in those situations to help me clarify and understand how he prepared me to be more, do more, explore more than normal, whatever that means. And I continue to be amazed, thankful, and humbled by God's sense of humor in continuing to work with me. I ask you sincerely, have you, each of you, ever given yourself the time and permission to reach deep inside to explore God's given gifts to you? These are not the skills that others have told us are important or that we're good at doing or that we think we ought to be doing, are these God's given gifts? Hear this quote from the little book of Kitchen Table Wisdom by Rachel Raymond, doctor. What we believe about ourselves can sometimes hold us hostage. Sometimes all that's needed is a sense of possibility. And so dear friends, I'm here today to encourage you to challenge you to embrace the inevitable changes that are coming to our church in the future. Also, to realize the exciting possibilities these changes can bring to our current congregation, to our new members, and to the community at large. I was asked the other day if people can change. <laughs> My response is, like deaths and taxes, change is inevitable. I believe it is the ability to adapt to change and to make sure that the change is in God's name and to the good. In the CAT survey, we learned that there is much we can do in our church to invite, include, educate the younger generation in the ever-present existence and presence of God in our lives. Additionally, we learned that while members have all a relatively high level of satisfaction in our church, they may not have a high level of energy necessary for a vital church. The top priorities we stated in all ages who took this were to make necessary changes to attract new families with children and youth, to provide more opportunities for Christian education and spiritual formation, to expand our outreach to the ministries to those living on the margin. 70% of us responded that the same small group of folks make the most important decisions. And so, under the leadership and direction and guidance of Kelly Ann, Jessica Willett and I, all three, work together to give each of you the opportunity to delve deeper into your soul and your spirit to see how you might become an active part of this exciting newest journey upon which we all will travel together. Give yourself permission to honestly evaluate and celebrate your God-given gifts and to share them in this special place. And with all of us trying to share that little light 
that God shines. And so that each of you becomes a part of the solutions for our future spiritual growth, please do this. Take the spiritual gifts survey home. Get yourself a glass or a cup of your favorite beverage and give yourselves 20 minutes uninterrupted. I did it in 15 to focus on you. Be kind to yourselves and completely honest to answering these questions. No humility with God-given talents. Who are you, really? We will be discussing this more in the coming weeks, and we will have a brunch August 22nd, always food, to discuss the questions, thoughts, concerns that you may have. We are all in this together. It is going to be enlightening and inspiring as we share our gifts with one another and the community. God has blessed this congregation in many ways. Let us thank him by continuing his message. The ushers will be handing out surveys. You may have them already as you leave. Copies are available outside the church, and Maggie will be sending them through Realm as well. Please join me in bringing your spiritual gifts as an active, caring, engaging, supportive member of this place and its people. Let us greet one another with the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Let the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Thank you.